Hi, I'm Ashton. I've made myself a vegan hot chocolate with a shit ton of vegan marshmallows that's still way too hot to drink. Um, and today I am going to be giving you my now annual, this is the third time I've done this, roundup of good trans-related news that has happened in the past year. Obviously, before we get started, I do want to acknowledge that bad news and, you know, deaths and really terrible things happen a lot of the times to trans and non-binary people. And when you're in a trans community, you hear about those things quite frequently. And obviously those are things that we need to pay attention to and talk about and acknowledge, but sometimes we also need some positivity because dealing with negative news every single day when you're trans and that news impacts you personally is a lot for your mental health and for your well-being in general. And it's just, it's so much. And I don't think anybody should have to deal with that on a daily basis. And when I did this video for the first time at the end of 2017, I I didn't want to sit there and be like, this year, this law was passed that makes it harder for us to exist. Like that would just suck, you know? I don't want to do that. Well, I acknowledge that negative news and all news about trans people needs to be seriously considered and discussed and, you know, combated. That's not what I'm here to do today. And I would like to ask that you keep that positivity going in the comments. If there's a certain news story that I miss that's really cool about being trans, if there's something that happened in the last couple of days of the year, because I'm not filming this the day it goes up, I need time to edit. If you're trans, let me know about your personal accomplishments this year. Um, yeah, let's just keep it positive because that's what this video is about. That's what it's been about in the past couple of years. And I just want to keep that going. But I still do want to acknowledge that bad things happen and those things are also important to acknowledge. Also, before I get started, I wanted to shout out a Twitter account that didn't exist these past two years, but in 2019, the Twitter account at Good Trans News started. I would definitely recommend that you follow them. They always tweet out links to articles that are, you know, positive news about trans folks or like cool laws that have been passed, you know, firsts that happened within the trans non-binary communities. It's cool. It's a good time. I would definitely recommend giving them a follow. I did scroll through their Twitter account to uh, collect, you know, more articles and make sure I didn't miss anything. But most of the things that I'm going to talk about are things that I've written down over the course of the past year. And then um, over the past week, I've also been doing sweeps of the news throughout the past year. Long story short, I did a lot of research to like make sure I got the majority of cool things that happened for this video. Um, if I left something out that you remember and you think is pretty cool, let me know about it. I'm not including like every trans person's personal accomplishments. Like I'm not going to be like, oh, this, this transgender person came out or this transgender person got surgery, good for them. Um, Cause that would take hours and hours of a video and as lovely as that would be, that would take a lot of time. Um, so this is just like major-ish or, you know, not so major news events, cool things, firsts, accomplishments, things that happened within different transgender communities and the general world this year. Also, before I get started, I wanted to mention that I'm not going to link a source for every single thing that I talk about. Um, certain things, like if there's media attached to it, I would link. For the vast majority of these news stories, there are multiple articles on each one and multiple sources, so it should be pretty easy to find on the internet with just a few keywords in your Google search bar. So I won't be linking everything down below, but if there's like a particular piece of media that's connected and wouldn't be like easily found through searching, I will link it and I will like, you know, title the link with how it's relevant. Okay. With all that over with, let's start from the beginning in January. In January, it was revealed that Spider-Man Far From Home would be the first ever superhero film to cast two trans actors. Both of them were trans men, and one of them was a black trans man. They were both minor characters, but yay representation. Also in January, Harry Bruce, also known as H Bomber Guy on YouTube, conducted a 57-hour uh, Twitch stream raising money for Mermaids UK, which is a charity that helps trans children. Um, he started it as like a spite thing towards this certain celebrity who shall not be named that's a shithead to trans people, but he ended up raising over $340,000 to help trans kids in the UK, which is super fucking cool. Harry did a talk at XO about how he, you know, transformed like this spiteful thing into this really cool act of charity. And he talked about some of the people that came on, including Left at London, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, some like designers and artists behind Donkey Kong 64, which is what he played for 57 hours. It's weird to think that that happened almost an entire year ago now, but it was a very cool thing. And if you didn't know about it, then now you do. Following some shitty comments made by Victoria's Secret about trans people in 2018, Nero Bergdorf teamed up with Blue Bella, which is a UK lingerie company, and they did a collaboration focusing on diversity and inclusivity to combat 
shitty Victoria's Secret things. Also in February, a uh, cardinal went semi-viral for being a hybrid. It's described as half male and half female, so half the cardinal is red and half of it is brown. You may be asking, Ashton, how is this trans related? I get it, it's a bird, but it can spark conversation about intersex humans as well as intersex animals and discussions about how sex is not a binary. Also in February, Tennessee became the first state in the South United States to enact a anti-hate crime law specifically protecting transgender people. In late February, a trans teen won his court case in British Columbia, which allowed him to pursue medical transition without the consent of his father because his father was transphobic and he wanted to transition anyway, and he was allowed to because of the court system, in Canada at least, so that's pretty cool. And I wanted to include it because obviously it's not only a huge victory for him, but that case can be used as a legal anchor for other trans children and teens and people that are under the age of 18 that need to transition, but their parents are transphobes. In March, Notch was removed from the credits of Minecraft. If you don't know who Notch was, um, I say that like he's dead. Notch was one of the creators of Minecraft who is a terrible, awful, shitty person. I can't even get into how bad he is, but if you would like one example, he said, uh, he would rather be a fascist than be a trans person, so... <laughs> But in March, he was removed from the credits of the game, and I only say this because it sparked a lot of trans-positive memes, such as the Minecraft bee with the trans flag on it, and a lot of just really cute, lovely, trans-positive Minecraft memes, and like, very pure, very good, thank you, world for allowing that to happen. In April, the only all-male historically black college in the United States announced that it would begin accepting transgender men as students in 2020. Morehouse College is considered one of the top schools for men and for black men, so the fact that now trans men can go there is pretty fucking cool, I think. In May, the World Health Organization stopped treating being transgender as a mental disorder. Finally, took them long enough, but hey, it happened, which is good. Although there was controversy over this decision, even within the transgender community, I would recommend that you watch Mia Mulder's video essay called Transsexuals and Suffering. It outlines a lot of the reasons why um, medicalizing transness and considering it a disorder is harmful and, and not really backed up by science or history. So I'll be linking that in the description. So from my perspective and from a lot of trans people's perspectives, this was pretty damn good news. In May, Lucia Lucas became the first openly transgender person to be a lead in a standard operatic work in the United States. And there wasn't a lot of media attention around it. I mean, partly because it's opera and there's not a lot of media attention around opera in the first place, but also because she talked a lot about how she wanted the focus to be on her voice and her talent and not the fact that she's trans, which is something that a lot of trans people talk about. The fact that we don't necessarily want to be acknowledged first and foremost as trans, but we want our talents and our skills and our, and our intellect and other, you know, values that we have so that happened, and it was a landmark in the opera slash theater world, but it also sparked discussions about how trans people shouldn't necessarily only be, you know, marketed, for lack of a better word, as trans people, but just as people who can do beautiful and amazing and talented things and are also just trans, and it's fine. Also in May, New York City announced that it would be putting up a monument to Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson in Greenwich Village. Rivera and Johnson were two trans women of color that led the Stonewall riots and are oftentimes underrepresented when it comes to queer history because they were not white and they were trans and, you know, they don't get as much attention as white gay men oftentimes do when it comes to the fight for queer rights. The city says that their monument will be one of the world's first monuments of the sort for transgender people specifically, and it's also part of an ongoing initiative in New York City to lessen the gender gap in public art installations because they very often tend to be men. New York City has had before a uh, statue to commemorate Stonewall, but it was four people just sitting and standing. Um, they didn't appear to depict any particular activists, and they were all painted white. So um, this one should be better, I hope. In July, Bray Kidman announced that they are running for Senate in 2020, making them the first openly non-binary candidate for Senate. They describe themselves as a tattooed plus-size queer millennial who enjoys burlesque dancing and has never run for office. So um, needless to say, I will be moving to Maine so I can vote for them. <laughs> it's also notable that while they were registering for the race, they noticed a lack of gender neutral honorifics when it comes to the application process. So they talked to government people about it. I don't know how that works, but they did. And they got the honorific mix, MX, added to the little drop down so they can like legally be recognized as Mix Kidman when they are running, which is so fucking cool. <laughs> they said, just knowing that there's one less hurdle because I was here, if we can remove some of the barriers to trans people getting adequate representation in our government, then it will have been worth it. So, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of electoral government. I have my own issues with 
um, government in general, but I think this person is a really rad person and they deserve some recognition. In August, Gavin Grimm finally won his court case in Virginia. I'd been following Gavin Grimm's case forever. He's a trans man who took his school to court because they wouldn't let him fucking pee, um, and it took him forever to win, and he's out of high school now, so it doesn't really matter to him anymore, but he continues to fight for it, and he's just really inspiring to me and to a lot of other trans people, so go Gavin. In September, London's first ever trans pride march happened. Also in September, a private women's university in Japan started accepting transgender women without any medical certification requirements for their 2020 year. They say that they wanted to respect students' rights to self-determination, and allowing trans women into an all-women's school is, you know, a pretty cool way to do that. Um, this wasn't massively reported, at least not where I live, because, you know, I'm in the States and Japan is not relevant in the States, so I will be linking a couple sources for that down below in case they are a bit more difficult to find. Also in September, Merriam-Webster added they as a non-binary pronoun to the dictionary. Obviously, they, the word, has been in the dictionary because it's been a word forever, but they put in an extra definition for its use specifically as a pronoun for non-binary people, which is cool. That's one of my pronouns. In October, Taiwan celebrated its first ever pride since the legalization of same-sex marriage. This isn't trans related, but it's LGBT in general, and obviously trans people went to pride because it was pride, and I wanted to include it in any way because it was big news and it's very exciting, and I thought it was cool, okay, cool. In early October, out of 24 students who were nominated for homecoming court, Trevor Meyer won. He's a non-binary person with no pronoun preference, and they wore a dress, and they looked fucking fabulous. This was in a conservative California school district too, so, I'm very proud of them, they looked incredible, and and most of the news that I found about them was surprisingly affirmative, so that's pretty damn cool. At the end of October, the Mazzoni Center in Philadelphia, which is a LGBT center in Philadelphia, <laughs> announced employment benefits for trans workers, and it's like a fucking landmark because no companies do that, right? But it's being treated as a possible template for further protections for transgender workers. About a quarter of the employees at Mazzoni are trans or gender non-conforming. The labor union there won a contract that includes some pretty major protections for trans employees. It guarantees full and part-time employees a minimum of two weeks paid leave for any gender-affirming surgery and ensures further paid time off as medically necessary. So if you need top surgery, FFS, bottom surgery, uh, any sort of reconstruction, whatever gender related care, you will get paid time off there, which is great and should be standard. But the fact that it's starting to happen is pretty good news. In November, Danica Rome was reelected. Um, I think I talked about her in my first yearly one of these, maybe second, but talked about her before, so I'm not going to go in depth. Just wanted to mention she got reelected, and I love her. Also in November, Next Goal Wins began production in Hawaii. The film is about the first trans footballer to play in a Men's World Cup qualifier. That person, Jaya Sula, is a Fafafine, and they're being played by Kemana, who is an actor who is also a Fafafine. So representation for not only a non-binary gender, but a gender that is very not Western and not very commonly recognized even within trans spaces. So. Also in November, Team Trans, which is the first ever hockey team to be compromised of entirely trans players, had their first match. Their logo is a unicorn, and some of the players described the team as like an instant family and a sense of belonging since coming out as trans, and being in a sports field is a pretty unconventional thing, and I just, uh, I remember what happened. It made me so happy, and it's just very pure and very good, and it, it's just good, okay? It's good. Finally, in December, the pronoun they was announced Word of the Year by Merriam-Webster, which is cool. Um, remember earlier how I was talking about there were other definitions for the word they, but this this definition is specifically for non-binary people? That's again what I'm talking about. It was added to the dictionary this year, and now it's the Word of the Year, so like, we're really out here existing. Also in December, it was announced that Chris Mosier is going to the Olympic trials and he will be the first trans man to compete with men. So good luck to him. If he gets into the Olympics, I will actually watch the Olympics. And finally, in late December, Outsports announced a new yearly category that they're going to be doing Outsports Non-Binary Person of the Year. I never see anything like that, so it's really cool. And this year was Sonic Fox, who's a black, gay, non-binary person, and oh my god, I love them. Wow, I love them. They do esports. They're also a furry. They're just a really fucking cool person, and their existence just makes me very happy, so. They exist, they're cool, check them out. Sonic Fox came out a while ago as a non-binary man, which like, me too, same gender. So, 
pretty cool. And that was the last thing that I had on my list. Oh my God. If anything happens in the last few days while I'm editing this video, um, drop it in the comments. I might've seen it, but I might not have, and it won't be in the video because it has already been filmed. I am done filming it now. So wow, that is it. That is all of 2019's good trans news. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it was a little bit uplifting or encouraging. As I said in the beginning, let me know your own good trans news stories and have a lovely new year. I hope your 2019 was great and incredible and life-changing in a good way or not life-changing. If you didn't need to change your life, then like, I hope it wasn't life-changing, you know? I, I hope you had a good year. Goodbye. I hope your 2019 was incredible and I hope this video was at least a little bit uplifting and I'll talk to you later, maybe, in 2020. Ah!